Hey guys, I just wanted to briefly go over uh, how I get the guitar tone that I get and uh, how to basically just get a decent guitar tone overall. There's a few different things you can do if you're recording digitally like I do. Um, I don't record uh, guitar amps with microphones or anything, it's all digital. Uh, there's a couple different things you can do. One is uh, Pod Farm programs like this that have uh, amps in them, different amp simulators and different effects and stuff. I used this one for a long time, but I moved over to something else. But this one is called Pod Farm. It's pretty good. This is one setting on here that I used to use. It's called, well, it's a, a, it's a preset that I set up. I just called it metal and uh, it kind of sounds like. <laughs> So it's just a basic little sound. It's kind of trebly and stuff. I don't use this one anymore, but I used to quite a bit. The thing that I do now is I use this preset from Tune Track called Easy Mix. And for metal songs like this, I use a, a preset called Coloss Rhythm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Coloss right, whatever, but that's what it's called. And it sounds like this. Okay, you can see that one sounds quite a bit better than the little pod farm one, but this one has like hundreds of different guitar sounds. But basically, after you figure out what tone you want to use, whatever you're doing, the next part that comes in that's super important <clears throat> is the mixing and different settings you apply to the guitar track. So let's see here. I will set up a click track, and I'm just going to go ahead and record one riff but you don't want to record it just once you want to record it more than once i record mine four times and each time you add a new track of you playing the same thing it sound it just makes it sound bigger and like thicker overall so i'm going to go ahead and do that real quick so i can show you what i'm talking about okay there's the first one and then what i do is i just duplicate the track not the actual recording itself and I pan the first one all the way to the right, so it only plays through the right speaker. And then the second one, I'm going to pan all the way to the left, so it only plays through the left speaker. And I'll mute that top one while I'm recording. Okay, and then I duplicate the track again. And this time, I'm going to pan this one to the right, but not all the way to the right. Somewhere around like 70% or something like that. Okay, and then I do this one more time, duplicate the track again, and pan this one to the left about 70%. Okay, and you heard what it sounded like when I only played one track at a time, so here's what it sounds like with all four tracks played at the same time. Okay, obviously there's some timing issues there that I would go back and fix later, but you can definitely hear the difference between one track and four tracks. It just sounds a lot bigger. Okay, and then when you, once you get that all done, you click on one of your guitar tracks, and the settings that I use, first off, I'll go over the EQ. Uh, I have a preset here called B-flat, because uh, it's a little. the settings are a little bit different when you're in low tunings like this, because there's more bass and whatnot. For this tuning, I take the low frequencies and I boost them up just a little tiny bit. The low mid frequencies are drop just a little bit and the mids are scooped and then the treble frequencies are boosted just a little bit like that so it's just a really basic eq not a whole lot going on there and another thing i did was i added a parametric eq this was for the song that i did um, indications there was some weird frequencies going on with this low tuning so i put a parametric eq in there and basically what that does you can pick a specific frequency and you can drop it down a little bit so if there's a frequency that's sounding weird in the song you can find it with this and then turn it down uh, what I did for this low tuning in drop B is I went to 97 hertz right there and I dropped it down to 5.42 decibels. You don't have to be that specific, that's just what I happened to do on this specific song and it helped out a lot. And the next thing I do, I do this on every song, you add a low pass and a high pass. The low pass is going to cut out high frequencies in the guitar that you don't want to be there and the high pass is gonna cut out the low frequencies, like to make room for the bass guitar and whatnot. Like the low pass would cut out high frequencies to leave rooms for the uh, the cymbals and the hi-hats and the drums. Uh, the low pass setting that I use for this tuning is 3025. And again, this is not an exact science. This is just what happened to work for me for this specific song. Every song is different, but these are 
okay bass lines, especially for this tuning. So 30, 25 hertz, I cut that off there on the low pass. And then the high pass, I cut at 156, which is clear down here. Because there were some rumbling frequencies in this uh, low tuning on this baritone guitar, so 156 hertz is where I dropped it off for the high pass. And then on top of that, I just give a, a little tiny bit of echo, like 5%, 4 or 5%. And then the reverb, I'll give it like 10% but sometimes I don't even add those because this is just the rhythm guitar. Uh, those are more important when you're recording lead guitar and whatnot. That's basically how I mix all my guitar stuff. So real quick, I'll play this back with all those settings and you'll be able to hear a definite difference in the, uh, the quality of the sound when it's all mixed together. Obviously, again, like I said, the timing is off there because I didn't have a drum track that was just hastily recorded. But there is definite difference there. And then when you add the bass guitar to that, it sounds so much better. And then when you add the drums, it'll sound like this. All right, and that's basically how to start mixing. Obviously, you can go anywhere from there. Uh, that's just a decent starting point for when you're mixing, especially in drop B flat. If you're recording with a, a lot higher tuning, then the settings for the high pass and low pass and whatnot wouldn't be so severe. Uh, you can cut off higher frequencies and you don't have to worry about those super low ones like this one has.